it's time for another episode into how to make Among Us YouTube game dev series. I'm Adrian and welcome to Redefine Game Dev, it's where the game dev starts. In this episode we will look into three different things. The first one, how to make lights in Unity, especially 2D lights, how to attach them to the player and how to make a moody atmosphere with lights and shadows. Secondly, we will look into how to animate the player using idle animations and move animations. And lastly, we will add sounds to specific rooms to increase the immersion of the game. If this sounds interesting, then this is the place for you to be. I want to do a quick update for the Space Survival Asset Pack that I've put a couple of weeks ago. We have now reached 5 releases and each one adds new features on top of the previous one. We are heading for a full release, which will happen in December then it will get also the full price. If you haven't got it yet, then you should check the description for more details. Also, if you want it for free, don't forget that I put in each video and actually last three of them, unlock codes. Of course, they're hidden, so good luck finding them. By the way, no one found any unlock code yet, so they're still available for every video. Join our awesome Redefiner gang community on Discord. You'll find the links in the description below. Now let's get started with the tutorial. Let's begin with the lights. In order to make them work, we need to upgrade the project to URP or Universal Render Pipeline. Don't worry because this is a straightforward process and it's very fast. We'll head over to the package manager inside Unity and search for the Universal RP and hit install. This will add the package to the project, but we still need to create the actual pipeline. For this, we need the pipeline asset. We will remove the renderer since we will use the 2D render instead. The final step is to set it up in the project settings and we are done. To have materials that are affected by light, we will use the sprite lit shader. And since we don't have any 2D lights in the scene, it will be completely dark. Let's create the 2D point light and see what happens. In the inspector, we can customize a lot of values of the light The light needs to be attached to the player because it needs to follow it. We can add one in the player prefab. If you notice, it's kinda hard to edit the light here since you don't actually see any results. We'll go back to this in a second. For now, in the main scene, we can opt for an ambient light if we want to have a simple lit environment. We'll end up later keeping a debug light to be able to edit the environment and disable it when we finish. The shadows are created using Shadowcaster 2D. We can edit the shape as we like and create even more points to increase precision. In order to test the shadows, we need to set the light's shadow intensity a value bigger than zero.
Coming back to the player prefab, after we added the 2D point light in the scene, we can copy the values and paste them in the prefab for accurate results. This is how it looks with the player's light casting shadows. I created shadows for the whole level and this is the final result. Lastly, our changes need some scripting as well. This is a small one. We need to remove the player prefab's light if it's not our own because you don't want light from other players. Let's get into animation. Here there are a couple of options which we can pick from. We could go for an animated sprite sheet where we draw each frame of the animation. We could do the animation programmatically by rotating the parts with code. Or we could use the Unity's keyframe animation system which we will use for this. As a prerequisite we need to split the body from the full as we previously had into the upper part and the legs. Let's create an animations folder and create a new animation called idle inside of it. Probably you don't have the animation window below like me. Don't worry, you can access it from the top window menu, animation and animation. There's also a shortcut, control plus six. Now let's prepare the player's prefab. We will use the split up parts and remove the old one after we use it as a reference. One thing to note, it's good to group the leg outline and fill under an empty game object called leg. This will be the one to move. For the upper body, we will do the same. Notice that by changing the order in the render layer, the legs are drawn above or below the other objects. Now let's animate. As you can see from the left side, we are in the player idle animation. By dragging the top blue arrow, we can specify the duration of our animation. In order to actually animate an object, we need to point to it. We will use the upper body in this case. It's a transform position to be more exact. By hitting record is where the magic happens. Now we can record unique keyframes, which are points in the timeline that have different values, 
basically where the object should move, scale or rotate. It's good to specify the beginning and the ending keyframes, because they will be the same. Only the middle changes. By pressing play, we can actually test it. While doing this, I got an error, animation event has no function specified. This is an easy fix. Look for the above keyframes in the timeline and if there is a sign that looks like a pencil, right click it and remove event. For the player move animation, we need a new animation clip. We also need to add the transform for both legs. But before you can do that, notice how the leg rotates in a weird way. That's because of the pivot is set to the center and not top. I have a nice trick for fixing the pivot. We can create another game object, in this case a small sprite, which will position in the 000 of the leg object. Now we can move the other objects, keeping track of the original position. After this is done, you can remove the reference object as it's not needed anymore. Duplicate the other leg with the new parameters and you're good to go. To create the move animation we need to specify different rotations for the legs while the record button is turned on. After this animation is finished, we need to have a way to control which animation plays when. Here you will need to use an animation controller. An animation controller is a way that allows Unity to know which animation to play. This can be done in a visual way by using the animator window. As you can see here, we already have the two animations, player idle and player move. The entry state is what gets called first and it points directly to the idle state. We'll create a bool variable which will allow us to change the animation state via code. The bool variable it will be called is walking. Next we'll create a transition between idle and move and give is walking as a condition. We will need to create a reverse transition for when the walking stops. In the inspector, make sure that the player prefab has the animator component and the player animation controller attached to it. It's scripting time. Before diving into animation, we need to make a quick stop at player info. Since we split up the object into multiple small objects, we need a new way to change the color of each sprite. We will use a list of body parts. And for the actual initialization, a for each that assigns each part to the player's color. In the player move script, we will get a reference to the animator that we just created as a component. In update, we will set the is walking variable depending on the input. If either velocity on x-axis or y-axis is different than zero, it means that the player is moving. If not, it's not moving. Note that this will only set the animation for the local player. 
Now let's assign the body parts to the upper body and legs. If you have problems with the legs not being shown on the screen, it might be because the Z value is negative. Make sure you have the value set to 1 and it should work properly now. As the last touch, we need to sync the animation with other players. Luckily, Photon provides a simple and convenient way to do so. The Photon Animator View. Here we need to specify which value from the animator we need to synchronize. By the way, I suggest you use this script for optimal performance reasons. And that's it! Let's put it to the test. Lastly, we will take a look at the sound. There is a lot to discuss here, but I opted for the room sounds, which should give a nice atmospheric feel for the game. This is quite simple to achieve. We need objects that have an audio source as a component attached. They can be configured with minimum and maximum distance. I suggest to use the linear volume rolloff, but feel free to experiment with the other settings to get the desired results. After placing more sounds in the scene, we need to make sure that they will play on awake and they are looped. The volume might be too high as well. As for the most important change, we need the spatial blend to be set to 1. This will allow our sounds to be location bound. And this should be it. Import what sound you like and drag and drop it in the audio source. We went through a lot of stuff today, but mostly it was focused on Unity functionalities and less on code. This step is really important because this is how you make a game fun. You create an awesome experience. By the way, I have a link showing how to make a game fun if you want to check that more into detail. If you need help with the tutorials, there is a link uh, with the text version in the description down below. By the way, you can also join the Discord community where you can ask questions, talk game dev and even more. I'm Idwan, see you in the next one and I'm signing out.